social banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. My name is Mike Yineku. I'm CEO of a firm called The Beige Group. We're domiciled in Accra, Ghana, and in West Africa. Beige Home is the first of the companies I started within the group as a real estate concern. Yes, but even prior to Beige Home, I was doing finance management consultancy, but those were businesses that I discontinued at the time I started Beige Home. So in the, in the Beige Group, the first of them was Beige Home, which I started. My motivation was driven by the desire to go do something else because after about 10 years of working in industry, I thought I had uplifted my usefulness and I wanted to do something else, something that would be more challenging to myself because I was at a point bigger than what my firm that was employing me wanted. So I had to exit and start finding satisfaction in something else. Well, naturally I had fears, but I guess I had just made up my mind that I had to go out because I was not finding satisfaction in what I was doing anymore. So I had to decide this is what I was going to do. Whatever I find myself in, it must succeed. So I went out there and it was a 50-50 thing. I had to only guarantee myself a year's salary ahead. I knew I could pay myself in full for a year. And beyond that, I need to knock some, some stones. And I had some doubts, but it was not going to daunt me, you know. Well, the fortunate thing is I had to make my own decision, so I did not have to go account to someone what the next phase or the next direction of my life would be. It was a personal decision that I did to myself. I guess I probably involved my wife by then in it, and it was not to say I need your endorsement. No, this is where I'm going, and that's what it's got to be. And so I moved on. And fortunately for me at the time, I was reasonably secure in my finances. So I deployed everything I had saved at the time in starting up my ventures. I did not have to depend on family or friends at the time. I had enough to start up at that time. I adopted a lifestyle. I knew I had gone, I was venturing into an area where I was not going to depend on anyone for my income. I was not going to depend on anyone for any regular source of income. So I had to decide on a lifestyle. There were things that I was not going to do anymore because they were going to cream off my pockets. I had to live a certain minimum standard of living to afford me enough resources to invest in my ventures. Lifestyle was practically one of the major sacrifices I had to make. Lifestyle. I, I'm not an early riser, I, I'm up from bed at about a quarter to six and I convince myself to come to work. I don't like to come to work, I have to. <laughs> so many things happen around me, I am the nerve center of the business. So many approvals have to happen, so many meetings have to happen and they won't happen if you are not there. Normally my day is planned the day before, if in my week or month is planned ahead of time. And I go through several meetings, meeting different teams, meeting functional heads, several groups of people. I like to get deep into the affairs of the business. So whereas I could meet possibly the head of finance, I like to meet the finance team as well. So I know what they're doing. I like to meet the HR team not just the HR head, because the head may tell me what they, what they want me to hear, but the team could speak their mind, you know. So I meet the different teams, I review reports, I try to clear my email, and I'm compelled to have to maintain what I have started. That's number one. And number two, I have crazy dreams, and I see myself very far away from my dreams, so I have to 
continue taking these baby steps towards them. So one is, is the fact that I have to continue carrying this burden that I have put on my shoulders because if I, if I renege on carrying them, they will drop. And then the second is the fact that I, I don't see myself where I want to be yet, so I have to force my way to get there. I'm looking at something and I want to get it. The greatest challenges that I have come up with in this journey is people. People. It's difficult to find people who are all around, people who are not just thinking in, in a tunnel. You know, you, it's difficult to find people who are who want to get as much as you want to get, people who want to outdo themselves. We're, we're docile. We're not as crazy as some of us entrepreneurs want our staff to be. And it takes too much to have our people realize we're behind and need to be jumping, not crawling. You, you, you set up a company, you put someone in charge of the company, and you want the person to see the bigger picture that let's drive this company to this state and make a share out of the returns of the company. And they want to just defraud the company and gain money that they could only make in three months, four months, when you can have 20% of the company if we grew it for the next five years. People, people, people. If you're gonna focus on the process, then you'd have to visit their parents, visit their children, visit their fiancés. I'm not interested in that. I want the results. So if I'm gonna get the results by being hard on you, I'm sorry, then so be it. If I'm good to get it by being soft on you, I'll do it. I'm interested in the results. We were mentioned by the president in the State of the Nations address this year. I think that's ample evidence that our group, and for that matter, the people we hire, have gained significant benefits from being members of the group. We're employing about 2,000 people, and by extension, uh, taking care of about 10,000 people, if you're assuming that every household has five in it. That's a significant number of people to be affecting on a daily basis and directly through this group. We also have had persons that have had career advancement by virtue of just being employed by a unit within the group. So I see us making significant contributions to the growth of Ghana at large. My advice to the youth should be, there's no shortcut to success. I am not an advocate of self-employment all the time, but an advocate of what I call entrepreneurship. You don't have to be an owner of a business to be successful. You can be very successful working for an owner. I think over, over time, we're gradually preaching the concept of entrepreneurship, making people think that you only have to own a business to be successful. See my fingers, they're not the same. You need a different kind of streak to run a business. Do you understand it? So you, you, you need to be, you need to have something else inside of you to run a business, but hey, you can be a very successful employee, rising to the top most level in corporate organizations around the world and never be an entrepreneur. What you have to do, however, is to be the best that you can be wherever you find yourself. Learn the process of apprenticeship because whoever is ahead of you has paid dearly for the experience they have and there's no amount of time that you can use to shortchain the need for experience. Experience comes with time, time. But most of our youth are too quick to want to think they are good at what they do or too quick to want to think they have mastered their art. We're not gaining or we're not making use of the time, the time, time period you spend in an, in an apprenticeship. 
people should learn to learn from others, build capacity before they can be their own.